Before us, you see a mighty, roaring twin waterfall. But it's not just any waterfall. It's going to be the entrance to Sunny Flight. And they don't actually give you any indication of how to get here. We'll actually hear how to access this point from a dragon later on. I think in uh, the Magic Crafter Kingdom, which is the third world. And all you have to do to open it up is you have to jump once to each stone without uh, screwing it up like I almost did there. And then we'll jump to this one and they'll blink yellow. And that opens up Sunny Fly. This is the only of the one of the flight levels you have to open up in any sort of puzzle type fashion. And indeed, there's not a lot of puzzle solving in Spyro. Like I say, it's one of those late 90s collectathons, and it was mostly just about collecting trinkets. But we're going to run into Sunny Flight today, and we are going to, uh, not going to waste too much time here. We're going to, uh, maybe do a quick practice run, and then we're going to, uh, and then we're going to nail it for good. So what we have here is we have four different types of obstacles in every flight course. And I completely botched that because circle is square, or circle is the flame and not square. Square doesn't do anything here. You just have to hit each of these, uh, you just have to hit each of these, uh, little, uh, objects here. I'm gonna lose a lot of time because you see, you don't get a lot of time to do this, but time is added to the clock whenever you, uh, Whenever you uh, pass through an obstacle, such as one of these arches, you'll see how much time is added to your clock by successfully going through it or destroying it or doing whatever to it. Maybe I can get some. Uh, maybe I can get some good uh, time added to my clock here by stopping in the middle of the uh, stopping in the middle of the arches and going after the planes. And there are eight of each type of object. All right, I'm kind of uh, cutting it close. Okay, I don't see how I missed him, but, uh, okay, I'm running out of time here. I generally don't advise doing this. Usually, you should go after one obstacle at a time, but I got all the planes. I got all eight of those, so every time, there's 300 points for a course. Ah, oh, crap, I botched that. Well, you'll see here, you get 60 points every time you get all eight of a certain object, and you have to get, uh, and you get 60 points for getting all sets of objects at one time. So that's a total of 300 points, and that's what we're shooting for here. So uh, we are going to try again, and we are going to try again and again and again and again. Not all of them on camera, of course, because this may take me a while. It so often takes me quite a while to nail these flight levels. So uh, we're going to say yes again, and this time we're going to have our finger, our thumbs firmly on the circle button so that I can get this guy the first time. And you can see I'm flying pretty fast here. The game is kind of generous with the hitbox on these things. You don't have to be totally exact all the time, particularly with the pairs of barrels on the trains. Now here's what I like to do. Now we're going to uh, cut around here and we're going to go in here. Woo-wee! That's flying a little fast for comfort for me. Now we're doing the chest. We're going to cut around, hit all of these guys. And we want to do this all in one go, too. Okay, we got one chest, and it's on the way back out, so let's be sure not to miss that. And then we'll cut around to the left and go through the arches, which start here. Nice mood in the background. And nice music in this game, composed by Stuart Copeland, a uh, name you might not be familiar with, but he was also, back in the 80s, the drummer for the police, you know, Sting, Roxanne! Been looking for a uh, good uh, point to mention that little fact, because he uh, he made some pretty nice music for this game. Alright, and uh, let's get what planes we can. We'll uh, finish off the arches and then cut back around, because you see we, have, we are making pretty good time. You start most flight levels, I think you start this one with 30 seconds. Some start with like 35, and you get uh, you get time added to your clock for every object you are able to destroy. The planes are pretty easy, especially if you go to them. It's a little harder to follow the planes around. Although fortunately, these guys are exceptionally slow. So uh, looks like we are uh, making good here. There's the last one. Excellent. And we got all the objects in one go. You fly off, Spyro. You earned that exit. With a good 15 seconds to spare. And only two tries. Not too shabby. Well, we're not going to do any uh, time attack time trial type stuff. So we are going to uh, take our leave of Sunny Flight and go on to Toasty.
Toasty is kind of a ridiculous boss, actually. A lot of the bosses in this game are pretty ridiculous, actually. Nasty Nork does not have a uh, very good army at his disposal. Especially when you see uh, what's really behind a guy like Toasty, who looks badass, but, uh, well, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. He is decidedly not a badass. And since we've completed one of the Artisan Lands, in fact, we've completed all of them by this point, so now let's go into the, let's go into the Twilight and confront Toasty. We won't confront him immediately, of course, but, uh, we will, uh, we will have to, uh, get treasures along the way as well, just like in, uh, any other level. And here we have, I think only a hundred gems to get in this level. Yeah. We'll be getting more gems in boss levels later on, but this one they keep fairly short and linear. This is a, this is a kind of rough one. So, uh, the, that dog sleeping behind the shepherd guy. We've already encountered the shepherd guy in uh, Stone Hill, but uh, we want to be careful with the dogs because as soon as you uh, as soon as you go near them, they will uh, wake up and try to pounce you, and they're really fast. They take two hits, so when you get that first hit, you want to back off because uh, they mean business. So you don't want to mess with those guys. Well, well, uh, let's see. Let's go after the. Uh, well, let's let Sparks get this thing first. Oh wow! I thought I got too close to him. I thought I was uh, gonna get pounced there. Ah! Oh, what? Oh, I still gave him credit for that. Oh, that was a that was a cheapo hit, but I think there was a uh, there was a uh, sheep somewhere back here, was there not? No, that was back in uh, the artisan homeland. I'm uh, I'm getting my guys mixed up, so uh, let's go over to him. I hope I don't lose life on account of these guys, because it's uh, easy to get your life chipped away in this level. This is one of the first uh, really difficult uh, one of the first moderately difficult levels in the game in terms of uh, enemies and figuring them out. So I think we're uh, coming up we're coming up on a yucky part. Yeah, okay, well not really. Just more of these guys, I guess. This level is going to be a lot of moving forward, one step forward, two steps back kind of deal. So uh, we might we might be uh, taking our time a little bit. Woo! Uh, flirting a little bit with danger there. We want to make sure we don't miss the fork in the path here because there is a, uh, if we go off to the left in one of these parts, I think it's up ahead of this window right here. We want to get rid of all these uh, puppet dogs first. Puppet dog, I'm going to kill you. Roast you and have you for dinner, puppet dog. All right. Man, we're not doing too badly here. And uh, I think we'll uh, kill this guy for good measure. Before we go on off to the left and there's only one dragon in this level right yeah one dragon it's that guy up ahead but uh we're gonna take off here first like i say you want to look around at all times and make sure you're not running into anything whether it's off a ledge or into enemies like that guy that one that one can get you pretty easily actually and uh we're gonna run away from him whoa the wall was missing there it uh, kind of threw me for a loop i thought i was about to walk off into the abyss this game can get kind of glitchy sometimes actually uh not exactly the most trustworthy thing in the world at times so uh i would be really careful on spots like this when you're walking around an unguarded wall that can get pretty nasty pretty good nasty right Gnor? ugly and this is Nevin to tell us about Toasty. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on. I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. This boss has many tricks up his sleeve. I think Nevin is kind of overselling it by calling him one of, uh, one of Nasty's most devious henchmen, but, uh... Let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's save our game, at least, in case anything should happen. I'm not uh, so sure that it will, but you never know. And he will have these dogs bodyguarding him, so we know the drill by now with them. And there's Toasty. He just kind of stands back. He'll uh, swing his deal around taunting you. And yeah, he's just a sheep on stilts inside a nice-looking costume. 
you just have to roast him a little bit and he'll uh he'll pop a gym out of his costume and uh then the gate will open up for the next part and it just goes on like that toasty doesn't really do anything himself he's not terribly bright see even his costume is already gone devious henchman i think not and yeah there are a few more uh there are a few more of these puppy dogs but one more every time you pass through another gate i guess that's the uh i guess that's the difficulty curve going up and all he has all he can do at this point is just kind of run around and uh wow the bosses will give out better gym rewards later you'll uh they'll really pipe it up but it's yeah that that's toasty he's a sheep in a good looking costume although i do like how he was manipulating the scythe very nice but that is it for the artisan world so we need to return home now we've gotten every single treasure possible in the artisan homeland which amounts to a thousand gems out of the 12,000 in the game we still have a long ways to go but we have a thousand gems and two dragon eggs that's a really good start let's go ahead and uh, fill sparks back up to full if these uh, sheep will ever come to me yes come to butthead there he goes and let's go ahead and save before we make our way to the balloonist who will take us to the next world which is the uh, peacekeepers or peacemakers I forget what it's called exactly, but we'll know when we get there. In fact, the balloonist will probably uh, say it. Oh, not not quite. Doors right here, Spyro. To your right. Gonna give yourself Dane Bramage. Woo! There he is. And this is uh, Marco, the balloonist. He's gonna take us to... Ah, yes. Dragons are the requirement here. and We've been rescuing plenty of those. So we're gonna go on to the Peacekeeper's world now. Yes, of course we want to go to Peacekeeper's. Why would we want to stay here? There's nothing new to get or do here. And so, because we can't fly, because we're still a little dragon with stubby wings that don't quite work yet, we must travel by balloon to new worlds. So let's wait for the hot air balloon to drop. And tomorrow we will take up where we left off right here on this dock. We'll go up and get Mr. Dragon Guy there. And we will explore the Peacekeeper world in full before moving on to any of the subworlds. See you guys tomorrow.